an extra review for you all this week. Frantic Pengo, a new 1 to 8K title from... Look, I'm sorry if I'm about to butcher your name with my inferior British tongue, but here goes... Gabriel? Gabe, Gabriel? Gabriel Amore? Amore? Look, if I, if I say it in every possible way, I might get it right. Either way, it's on screen. If I haven't said it correctly, I duly apologise. On the music side, we have Pedro Pimenta, unless it's pronounced Pimenta, in which case I've done an absolutely terrible job already, and things are off to a very offensive start on my part. Frantic Pengo is a game that takes its cues from Sega's oft-forgotten classic Pengo, a game in which you play a cute little penguin committing genocide on any penguin that isn't the same colour as you. If I was a student, I could probably write a 5,000 word essay on how this is racist, but as I'm only here to review a game, I'll stop short of saying it's definitely not racist because the red penguin has at least one green penguin friend. And while Pengo has largely been forgotten, it seems our two ZX Spectrum developers have definitely kept it at the forefront of their mind. Frantic Pengo is roughly the same game as the arcade original that inspired it, but for my money, it's a far more forgiving and, dare I say, enjoyable experience. As much as I enjoy the original Pengo, it is a harsh mistress to deal with, and while Frantic Pengo is no pushover, it's certainly easier to get to grips with. The difficulty has a much better initial curve than its coin guzzling inspiration, and it also sounds a hell of a lot better too. Here's the original Pengo's music. Now here's Frantic Pengo. Amazing, and I'm not ashamed to admit I spent a disproportionate amount of time sat at the intro screen listening to this ditty. Do you recognise it? I sure did, but it took a comment on the Facebook page to jog my memory. I'll leave you with it, and I'll give you the answer at the end. It's certainly not a track you'd expect to turn up in a game about penguins at any rate. So anyway, excellent music, yes, but story-wise, what's going on there then? You're tasked with rescuing your beautiful penguin girlfriend from the lava monsters. Yes. Lava Monsters. I guess with penguins having no predators in real life, the developers had to come up with their own antagonist for a plucky young hero to... What? Leopard seals? Who the hell's a leopard seal? And they eat penguins. That doesn't sound right. Sharks? Sharks as well. I thought they only ate krill. Whales do that. And whales also sometimes eat penguins. Is there anything that doesn't eat a penguin? Lava monsters, very funny. Right, go away, I'm trying to write a review. As we all know, the best way to deal with lava monsters is to crush them to death using a big block of ice, which is just as well, because that stuff is everywhere. You use Q, A, O and P to move around, and M to push a block. It'd be nice to have the option to change those controls, but there is none, so get used to it. You move around the single screen maze, you push up against a block and press M, the block flies off in the direction you're pushing, and Fingers crossed, you'll murder something. It's as simple as that. Once everything has been murdered by your sociopathic penguin, a heart will appear. Aww, oh, it's from your girlfriend, that's nice. It really offsets the murder. Criticism time though, I've got a few issues. None of them are game breaking, but well worth pointing out. Point one, sometimes, and I don't know if it's simply something that hasn't quite been explained or if it's a bug within the game, but sometimes enemies simply don't die. You'll hit them with a block and they'll look like they're dead, but they're not dead, they're alive. Now, there are sections in the game where this is meant to be the case, and that's fine, but every so often I would come across this weird scenario where an enemy simply didn't die. I'm not sure what caused it, and hopefully I can find footage of it actually happening, otherwise I'll just look like a smelly liar who's really bad at the game. <laughs> The 
This can also extend to the blocks themselves. Sometimes they'll just disappear and there's no real feedback as to why this is happening. Again, I'm hoping that I can find footage of this happening in one of my games because personally it seems like a weird glitch. I can't think of any other reason for it. All that being said, this stuff happens infrequently, so it's hardly a black mark against the game, simply an observation. My main criticism would be aimed at the difficulty curve, because I found that rather than adopt the natural curve of each level gets more difficult, the game dips and weaves and swings around like a mad roller coaster of difficulty. This is usually down to extra hazards that are added as you progress. There are magic cauldrons, for instance, which stop enemies from dying until you remove them all. There's big snakes that block your ice cubes, there's lava pits, there's even an end game boss. And all of these things pale in comparison to the spinning head laser firing nightmares. Their shots are so quick and your attention will be drawn elsewhere for the majority of these levels, it ends up being very easy to take a bullet without realising you're in the line of sight. That's fine, but their placement within Frantic Pengo is at odds with just how difficult they are. They turn up fairly early in the game, and if you get past them, they're removed for a fair few levels, making things suddenly feel very easy for a while, and then they come back in an even worse form, and then they go away again. I guess it's not a major issue overall, but it is one that makes the game swing backwards and forwards like a big penguin pendulum. One moment you'll be breezing through levels, and then next you'll be working your way through a living nightmare. One last point to note, I did find the controls a little slippery at times, but I find this with all grid-based games. Sometimes you'll overshoot the square you are aiming for, especially when you're in a rush, and this can lead to missing an easy shot or running straight into an enemy. All criticisms out of the way though, finally, sorry about that, this is a lovely little game that's well worth playing through, and dare I say that overall I find it to be more enjoyable than the arcade game which inspired it. The graphics are delightfully twee, and while they're basic, they have a definite character about them that really shines through. The music is bang on, the difficulty, while up and down like a yo-yo, is actually pitched pretty brilliantly when taken on an average curve, and the tight time limit for each level means that you're always is going to be on the back foot, but in a good way. It forces you to move quick, but make those moves count. And there we have it. I wasn't actually intending for this review to be as long as it is, because with all being said, Frantic Pengo is a fairly simple game at its heart, but it turned out I did have quite a lot to say about the game. Either that, or I just don't know when to stop talking. Walking like in a dolce.